Hey Holidaysers, it's Lindy here. On today's episode, we are going to be making Italian egg bread. And if you've never tried this bread, it is amazing. It's a really sweet bread and it's perfect for Easter time. So we're gonna start with one cup of warmed milk, mix in two tablespoons of sugar, and a package of dry instant yeast. We're gonna stir this together and let it sit to the side until it becomes light and foamy looking. Go ahead and stir it up good. This will help activate the yeast when you add it to the warm milk. While that's sitting to the side, we're going to go ahead and get out our stand mixer and start incorporating some of the other ingredients together. Notice on today's episode, I'm using the dough hook because we are making a traditional yeast bread. So this time it's very important to have a stand mixer to be able to use this recipe, okay? In our mixing bowl, we are going to mix together four cups of flour, half a cup of sugar, along with a teaspoon of salt, three eggs, half a teaspoon of almond extract, and if you don't have almond on hand, you can do something a little less traditional and use lemon or vanilla extract even. Some lemon zest, which makes it pretty amazing if you have fresh lemons to be able to zest. About one quarter of a teaspoon of lemon zest. And then one cup of butter that's been melted but slightly cooled. We don't want to cook the eggs in our mixing bowl. <laughs> okay, we're going to go ahead and turn on that mixer. And after a while, once it starts getting incorporated, you may have to add up to one more cup of flour. It really just sort of depends on how humid it is in the area you live in and what the temperature is like outside. Okay, once you pour in the butter, you're going to want these ingredients to mix together just a little bit while you're waiting for your yeast to proof over on the side. You can scrape down the sides, but you don't want to knead too much because you don't have the yeast incorporated just yet. So we're going to let this just go ahead and sit while my yeast proofs up. Now my milk has a slightly foamy look to the top of it, so I know that my yeast has activated and I'm ready to pour it into the mixing bowl. You're going to go ahead and put the dough hook back in and slowly add your milk, yeast, and sugar mixture. As you are mixing, if it's really gooey looking and not pulling away nicely from the sides of the mixing bowl, you can add up to one more cup of flour if needed. Mine's a little gooey looking, so I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit more flour into my mixing bowl, but not a whole cup at once. We really want it to start pulling away from the sides of the mixing bowl on its own. Once it does that, you can go ahead and set your timer for eight minutes and let the dough knead itself in the mixer. All right, once the eight minutes is up, you're going to have to knead it for a few minutes by hand. So you want to flour your surface so it doesn't stick to it. If you don't have a mat like me, don't worry. You can do this on your clean countertop. Your dough should easily roll out of your bowl. We're just for a few minutes going to go ahead and knead it. And basically all you're doing is pulling it towards you and pushing away, incorporating in a little bit more flour and just moving it around your mat. It gives you a good arm workout and it's going to make amazing bread once it's done. Now's the time to let our dough rise. So we're going to take some kind of a bowl. I happen to own 
two mixing bowls that are the same. And a little bit of oil, you can rub it in with a paper towel. You want to oil the sides down so as it's rising, your dough does not stick to the bowl. So all you're doing is wiping the sides, okay? You're going to go ahead and put your dough ball inside the bowl and cover it. You can either cover it with a dish towel or some saran wrap and, and you're gonna leave it until it doubles in size, which is about 45 minutes. It really sort of depends upon the temperature inside your house. I like using saran wrap because it helps seal that heat in just a little bit. While it's rising, you want to dye three eggs. You want to make sure they are not boiled because if you use an actual boiled egg in your bread, they will explode while you're cooking and that would be a big mess. So go ahead and dye three eggs that are not boiled and I chose three different colors and make sure that they're bright and pretty while your dough is rising. All right, our dough has just about doubled in size. So we're going to go ahead and create the loaf of bread. My suggestion is to oil your hands just a little bit so the dough doesn't stick to them. You also want a nice floured surface. You're going to go ahead and punch the dough down. And then put it out onto your floured surface. Break it into two pieces and then we're going to create long ropes out of each piece. Make sure you have lots of flour on your surface so it doesn't stick. And you literally are just rolling back and forth, creating a snake out of the dough. You can even stretch it some out with your hands and then roll to try to get some of those creases out. If you need to add a little bit of oil, don't be afraid to do that as well. You want your snake to be just about the length of your pan. Here's my cookie sheet, and my snake is just about the length of my pan. Try to get out as many cracks and creases as possible. It makes a nice smooth bread that way. Okay, go ahead and set one to the side and create your other one. Add a little flour to your mat if you need to. You want to make sure that both pieces of dough are about the same length. So you can see my second one is not quite long enough yet. All right, now that we have both pieces of dough about the same length, we're going to take our cookie sheet that has parchment paper and put it in front of us. We're going to move our dough onto the cookie sheet and braid it together. You're not braiding like hair, it's just a twist. So you're going to join the two ends together and sort of bend them under to make a pretty end. And then just twisty tie them back and forth. When you get to the other end, go ahead and put those together and bend that under as well. Try to go ahead and move it so it's into the center of your cookie sheet if possible. You're going to have three sections where you can add your dyed eggs, okay? Make sure your eggs are dry. If you have a spot that didn't get colored when you put it in the dye, then just go ahead and put that down. You don't wanna push them too far down because as your bread rises, the dough is going to rise up over it and you want those eggs to be seen once it's baked, okay? Go ahead and tuck in those ends if needed. You're going to go ahead and cover your dough for about another 45 minutes. It's gonna double again in size. Make sure it's covered well if you need two pieces of um, saran wrap in order for it to be covered completely. Let it sit quietly in a warm space for about 45 minutes. Then we're going to be ready to bake. 
My bread's been sitting here for about 45 minutes, so it's risen even more. I'm going to put an egg wash on my bread. It's just one egg with, with a little splash of water in the bowl. And then we're going to brush it onto the bread with a pastry brush. This is what makes your bread nice and golden yellow once it's baked. I would not brush it on top of your colored eggs, but just on the dough. I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees. And once I go ahead and brush this all over my bread, I'm going to bake for 20 minutes. Our bread is hot out of the oven and smells amazing. I can smell that almond extract and the lemon zest in it. You're going to want it to cool for just a few minutes on the pan before you transfer it onto a cooling rack. You can just pick that parchment paper right up, being careful not to burn your hands on the pan, and transfer it to the cooling rack. Just be careful, try not to break the bread. Let it cool completely before transferring it to a plate or platter and serving, and then enjoy. Thank you so much for joining me for today's episode. Be sure to click that subscribe button right now so you're notified every time we upload a new video. Make sure you give us a thumbs up if you liked this and feel free to add any comments or questions. Thanks so much, see you next time, bye.